Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have some wonderful Easter and spring DIYs that I think you are really going to like. It is part of an awesome collaboration, which I will explain a little bit more about that as we get into the video. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I love coming up with DIYs for these cutting boards from Dollar Tree, and I got this free image that I found on Pinterest. I'll link it below in my description box. I'm just showing you that I did pry up that front portion of this sign with my little putty knife there, and of course you can see it ripped everything off, so I just had to come to the fact that I needed to put some of this sticker transfer paper on here. This is just the removable uh, sticker wallpaper that they have at Dollar Tree, and I really love the herringbone pattern. So I just cut that out to the shape of the cutting board. I cut around the edges. I'm using an X-Acto knife to get around the curves there. And then what I do to get that really crisp edge after I do my X-Acto knife here is I get a fingernail file and I just file in a downward motion to get the crisp edge that's just going to take all of that excess off it's going to make it look like this actually was made to go on the cutting board and then since the sticker is a kind of paper you have kind of like a little white trim there I just take some antiquing wax on a baby wipe and I just go around the edges to kind of help that blend in now I didn't have any type of surface that was the exact size as this printable image, so I just decided to make my own. This is just a back of one of the signs at Dollar Tree. I had used some of the stuff off the front of it before and was hanging onto it. All I did was just score it with my X-Acto knife. A utility knife would probably work a lot better, but this did work, so I just scored it there and then I'll start my little cut with the scissors and then I'm able to just kind of bend this and it just snaps apart there. It does leave a little bit of a torn edge, so you want to use some sandpaper or the, your fingernail file there to make sure that you get all of that torn edge cleaned up and then you guys know I absolutely love this purple school glue I have so much success with projects like this I absolutely love it so I cover the sign surface really well and then I made sure that the edges of the paper were well covered as uh, also so that way when I press it down you're not going to have any peeling or anything like that and I take my brayer here which I do have this link down in my description box this I love this thing so I'm just just rubbing it all over making sure you get a very good bond now if the image does hang over a little bit like mine did I just clean that up again with my fingernail file there and then I decided on this to kind of age the postcard the little printable there so I just take some antiquing wax on a baby wipe and again just go around the edges of this and I really like the way it looked I kind of concentrated on the corners to kind of make it have even more of an aged look it already prints out like that but I I just thought that I liked the way that it looks so that's why I did that that would be optional now I love to do 3d signs if you guys have watched me you know that I love to create these for all different seasons and I thought I would kind of do a different version of one so rather than sticking styrofoam on the back and sticking my greenery into the styrofoam I'm gluing it directly to the image here. So I just pulled apart, this is some greenery I got at Hobby Lobby. Uh, any greenery will work, uh, even like the boxwood from Walmart or Dollar Tree, where whatever you've got is gonna work. I just cut it into some more manageable pieces and I'm just gluing it onto the back so it peeks out from around the sign and I decided to kind of have it all go in a similar direction so it's all almost gonna look like it's a wreath behind this so all of the leaves are facing the same circular direction so they're normally when I do these they're kind of sprayed out of the edges uh, but I thought it would be kind of neat to do this one more in like a circular motion like this and so on the top and the bottom I didn't want as much greenery is on the sides so I kind of pulled apart you can kind of see how I have smaller sprigs that I'm working with there and so I just started with a few and as I got going and when I would turn it over if I felt like I needed more then I would add more but I just really love the fresh look that this has I think this is gonna be so cute in a, in my kitchen or my china hut wherever I decide to put it but you can kind of see here those leaves you can see I'm doing them that same direction and the same thing all the way around pretty basic here you could also use a different type of glue if you don't want to use hot glue um, I just love using hot glue because it's just so easy but those little silicone finger things are perfect for projects like this I just picked these up at Dollar Tree but that way you can make sure that everything gets dries that hot glue and it's not gonna burn your fingers so when you see those definitely pick them up 
Now to make this pop out, to have that 3D effect, I need to put some type of surface. So I'm just using some tumbling tower blocks. I put a layer of four down there and it wasn't quite as high as I wanted it. So I'm just putting some more hot glue to have that second layer of those so it pops out a little bit more because I don't want to smush the greenery. So I'm just going to put a little bit, well actually right here I put a lot of hot glue and I just turn that over and while it is still manipulatable, I just kind of uh, zhuzh it around there, make sure that it's centered where I want it, everything like that. Now I take and blast my heat gun because that takes care of all those little hot glue spider webby things that you get. And then I'm just taking some thicker, this is twine I got, I think I got this at Walmart. It's a little bit thicker than Dollar Tree. It's not quite a rope, but I really like the thickness of it. And I just looped that through and had it there because that's how the cutting boards come. But look at how beautiful this is. I think this is going to be so fun for Easter. It will be perfect for spring and for Easter. I just think that the bunny is adorable. Again, I'll leave that link to this printable down in my description box so you can go to the original source that I got it from and print it. But I just think this turned out absolutely darling. I am so excited to be part of this collaboration and sharing this with you. This is a spring and Easter collaboration that I am participating in with Linda from Faith Chick 777 DIY by Design and also Alicia from Alicia at Home. Now, Linda has a beautiful channel. If you guys are not familiar with her, you guys are going to love her. She has that rustic, primitive, farmhouse style that is just amazing and honestly anything she touches turns to like craft gold like she's so talented and then sweet Alicia I met her through this collaboration and she is just the sweetest thing and she is just kind of starting her YouTube journey and you guys I know that you are so sweet and you are like so sweet in the comments that you leave me head over to her channel subscribe to her channel let her know Emily sent you have a look at her stuff that she's doing because she is so talented and I know that her channel is definitely going places and you guys all you have to do is click on the playlist link in my description box and it's pinned in my comments it'll take you right over you'll see my video you'll see Linda's video you'll see Alicia's video subscribe while you're there give them a thumbs up and some love and get some beautiful Easter inspiration. Okay, let's get right back into the DIYs. I recently found these little thread bobbins here uh, and I found a bunch of them at a little store that I went to and I thought they would make the most perfect carrots. Now I, my mom has decorated with things like this for years and I have some that I do decorate with, but I thought if I made them more kind of like a spring type theme here, I would probably use them a little bit more. Like it was something that I would look forward to getting out. So you could even leave them their original colors if you don't want to paint them, but you guys I love how these turn out and so it's something that I'm going to use a lot more this way than if I hadn't painted them. So I'm just using some orange chalk paint and I just do the first one I painted with just the traditional pumpkin uh, Waverly chalk paint. This next one I added a little bit of white to it to brighten it a little bit because I really wanted these little carrots to have some contrast. I really wanted these to kind of have an earthy vibe, look kind of natural, you know, just like a little bundle of carrots that you picked up at the farmer's market. And the other one I did a really kind of sparse, messy coat almost, so you could still see they, these were a green color um, that they had on them before. And so you could kind of see that green on the ridges there. And you can see when I dry these with my heat gun here, you can kind of see how that those colors take shape there and I love the variation here and then I do go over the two that I did with the heavier coat I give them both a second coat because I wanted some really good coverage on there and I just they, there's like a little like um, brass or metal part on the end of these like on the tip and if I got any paint on there it was really easy to wipe it off with a baby wipe so just keep that in mind and then here's just the regular orange one and then I went in on my one that was the full orange color I did antiquing wax here so this is just the brown antiquing wax from Waverly and I give it a really good coat all over with a brush and I wanted to make sure it went into all those little ridges and everything and then I took my baby wipe and I would come in and wipe it off so that way it gives it a really good 
is going to kind of take it off but not all the way because it's going to stay in all of the ridges and all of the chalk paint like it's going to kind of go into all of the little um, divots and everything in the chalk paint. Now this is some white wax. I've never used the white wax before but I've seen a lot of people use it and I love the effect. So I picked some up last time I was at the craft store and on that lighter pumpkin I'm taking that and painting or not pumpkin. I, I'm thinking pumpkin because of pumpkin chalk paint but these clearly are carrots. Oh my goodness. So I paint it all over the carrot and then I'm just wiping off all of that white wax. And you guys, I love how this looks. I'm so excited to use this on some other projects. And then this one, I kind of went up over that end too. I just, I just love the way that it was brightening this up. And again, it leaves it in all of those ridges and everything. You can see how they're lined up. They all look very different and I love how they contrast. Now this is just some greenery from Hobby Lobby that I picked up. Um, it's over in like their faux fruit and veggie section is where I found this and I felt like it looked a little bit like the ends of a carrot maybe maybe not I don't know but in my mind it did so that's what we're using so they fit right down into these little spools there so I just use a little bit of hot glue you could use another type of glue too if you wanted I just love the you know how quick and fast hot glue is so I just shove that right down in and that is it I mean that is so simple on these and look at how cute those are I mean they really do look like carrots it's almost like they were meant to be that way so I just take some twine here and I'm gonna make a cute little bundle so I just wrap the twine around a few times and then tie it off in a knot and I kind of wanted them um, a little bit you know not quite stacked right on top of another but I had that top one kind of askew a little bit there and then just tie that with a knot now I did have this little teeny tag that I had from a laser project that I had done that it was left over and it just says 25 cents each on it and I thought that would be so cute to stain with some antiquing wax and tie on there now obviously if you don't have anything like this just even like a little tag that you cut out or just something extra that you have um, I don't know some just cut it out of paper or some cardstock or something and do it but I just thought that was so cute to have that on there I just think these turned out darling look at how cute this is in this little vignette here I have this little boxer I'm so excited to decorate with this and honestly I was like this is more for spring but as I look at this I think this is something that I possibly could leave out year-round like in my kitchen or something what do you guys think of this I hope you guys really like this one this is a true trash to treasure DIY, but I love how it turns out. So I have this can left over for my dinner the other night and I rinsed it out really good, obviously washed it with soap and water and everything. And I'm just removing the base of the can. And if there was any sharp edges, you're just going to use a fingernail file to make sure that nobody hurts himself on this. And I'm going to make this to be a little like hanging basket. Well, you'll see what I do with it here. I, you probably already know, but anyway, I'm just using a rubber mallet here to kind of pound this into shape. And honestly, I didn't have to pound it that hard. Uh, and it really was easy to manipulate here once that um, like the base of the top were gone out of it and but I just wanted to make sure that that um, base there was closed off really well and I had a very flat surface to work with but I, I think this turns out so cute so I'm so excited to show this to you now this is a crocodile uh, it is a tool that cuts and puts grommets in so that's what I'm doing here so I pinched a hole or cut a hole in each side and then I put the little grommet tool on and then you just press it on there I mean I don't know how else to describe it other than you can kind of see what I did there but it finishes it off so much it gives it a really nice crisp look and that way you don't have any sharp edges or anything like that from like the cut metal now this is just some um, elephant chalk paint that I go all over and now I am taking some burnt umber I'm just trying to make this look very aged I want it to look like it's been sitting out forgotten about for years something like that I love coming up with ways to do faux rust cinnamon is a way that you guys always suggest I have yet to try that technique but what I take now is some Mer uh, Merlot I think was the color that on this one and it's just a really deep maroon and just a little bit and then I take a little bit of pumpkin this is just adding some different variations for the rust here and so you can kind of see it start to take shape there and the thing that does it is this yellow color and I just put a little and I mean just a little bit of yellow to brighten it up but it like honestly it really makes it look like rust you could even use a little bit of baking soda if you wanted some texture I felt like with the uh, texture of the can I didn't really need that and then I'm gonna go over the whole thing with Mod Podge once the paint dries so that way I'm not going to chip or flake any of the paint off because we want it to kind of keep this aged look so I just go over both sides with some matte Mod Podge make sure that it's matte I like at least I like the way that that looks now I got these napkins at home goods and I've done quite a few projects for spring 
with them and I'm just loving them still. So I thought this would be a perfect project to do here. So I'm just cutting out this cute little chicks and those little eggs there. And by cutting, you I don't really mean cutting. I mean, I'm using a brush, as you can see here, with some water, and then you just tear away the edges. So see how that was the bottom of the napkin? I didn't want that crisp edge. I want it to look very kind of natural, like it was just kind of torn out of something. And that is the easiest way to do that with the, the napkins are so easy to work with. And look at how cute. I just think these are so darling. Check Dollar Tree, check Dollar General, Walmart. Um, I got these at Home Goods is a great place to check or TJ Maxx for napkins, but all seasons they have such fun napkins and start looking at them with what DIYs can I do out of these because there are so many fun ones. And then just using some Mod Podge, you place down where you want your little piece of the napkin and then you just go over it, the top of it with some Mod Podge to make sure it is sealed in really good. Now, if for instance you couldn't find napkins or there was a design online you really liked, I show several videos I can link some below in my description box if you want me to of how you can print your own item on tissue paper and do basically the same process like there are so many fun things that you can do with like the decoupage process I just think that it's so much fun and you just use your imagination I mean there's no right or wrong honestly halfway through I'm like Ugh, is this even gonna look good and I feel like it always turns out so cute so I'm just taking the little bunny here and I'm putting the bunny on the back because I wanted this to be visible from all sides that it would look like it had stuff done to it. Now I did a project like this in one of my videos uh, in like earlier this week or last week or sometime and I used a little uh, hanging metal basket from the Dollar Tree and a lot of you messaged me and were like we can't find those baskets at the Dollar Tree. This would be perfect to use um, a tin can like this and in, instead of that because I know sometimes Dollar Tree is not consistent. Now I have this lace. This was like self-adhesive lace from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and I just put that around the bottom. I thought it would look so cute and kind of add a little shabby chic flair. I'll soften it up a little bit. And this is just fencing wire. So I honestly, we use this on our farm for fencing. It was just a kind of a roll that I kind of snuck out of my husband's truck from when he was fixing fence one day that I could use in my DIY projects. I feel like a little bit lighter gauge than this would probably work better. I don't even know what gauge this is, but I fit it through each of those holes on the side. And then just using some pliers, I spun it around to kind of uh, twist it on. And then I did cut off the excess edge and you can see I sanded down if there was any rough areas. And so now I'm putting in some Spanish moss and originally I was just going to put these eggs in and call it done. And then I thought I had this cute little paper that I cut up from a book with some pinking shears and I really loved the way that the pinking shears kind of added a little bit of a different texture than just the torn paper. And I got thinking, I had this little wooden chick and I thought this would be so cute to kind of have the chick in there since the little design on the front is the chicks and the eggs is to put this little chick with the eggs. But I couldn't think of how I wanted to do it because I didn't want to take away from the color of the can, like the designs on the can. So I just tore up some paper here and then just using Mod Podge, just randomly placed the paper. There was no rhyme or reason to this. You guys, I just went for it, just stuck them on kind of close to the same shape, but you're going to end up cutting it out after it dries. So you can see here, I just used the scissors and I got as close to the edge as I could. And then my little trick here with the fingernail file that gets into all of those little grooves and nooks and crannies. Look at how cute that little chick looks with the paper there. Now I wanted to age it a little bit. So I am just taking it and I am, uh, this is just an aging kit that I got from the craft store. Um, I believe they saw Joann's I think is where I got this from, but I just went with that little ink. You could use easily use antiquing wax or just a little bit of like brown paint watered down on there, but I just wanted to age him up a little bit. And then I stuck those little eggs in there with a little bit of hot glue so they wouldn't go anywhere. And then I just thought this was so cute, but I needed of course to age it a little more because that's just my style. So of course that's totally optional. And I tied this cute little bow twine bow on the edge there. And oh my gosh, like I just think this is cute. Now, after I got it and looked at it, I was like, it's kind of missing a little bit of greenery. So I'm taking just a little bit of boxwood from Walmart and just a couple little sprigs of it, put some hot glue and I just tuck it here and there just to kind of add a little bit more greenery into it. I felt like that kind of filled it out a little bit. 
But you guys, I literally pulled this tin can out of my garbage. It's a napkin and a book that was destined for the trash. Like, come on. I think this is so cute. I love it. It's that perfect little whimsical Easter decor and I'm so excited to use this. Is this something that you guys would try? Did you guys have fun watching me create these DIYs today? I absolutely had so much fun creating them. It is always such a pleasure to be able to share my DIYs with you. And you guys are all so kind and sweet with your comments. And I want you to know that I truly do read every single comment that comes through. And I absolutely love that you guys are appreciating the DIYs that I am making and I hope that these did not disappoint and you liked these as well. Please remember to click that link in my description box and pinned in my comments to visit the playlist. You have Alicia's video and you have Linda's video and you guys are going to be amazed at their beautiful DIYs. Make sure you let them both know that Emily sent you over there. Tell them hi. While you're there, you may as well subscribe to their channel, show them some love and be as sweet to them as you are to me. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you wanna keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.